Hello everyone, welcome to TechTo.com. In this lecture, we will start a different type of protocol which is multiple granularity. So far, what we have learned is based on that we treat each database item A, B, C, etc. as a individual data item. Okay, and individual data item means there is no intersection between this A and this B. So these database items A and B and C all are mutually exclusive, right? Now imagine a situation or we already know that in database we have a single in a single database we have multiple tables, right? We have multiple tables and in each table we have multiple records, okay? And each record we have multiple columns, okay, multiple values. So we have various levels of data. And if I say that, let's say this is a table A and it has a record R1. So if I consider table A and record R1, these two are not mutually exclusive, right? Basically, this table A and this R1 is inside this table A, right? So granularity means different level of data, okay, different level of data, whereas smaller levels are nested inside higher levels. So here you can see that inside database you have tables, inside table you have multiple records and inside record you have multiple values, okay. So there are different levels of data. Okay, which is called granularity of data. Now we want to use this granularity to ensure concurrency. And we believe that if we use this granularity, maybe the concurrency or the efficiency can be improved. So in multiple granularity, we have various levels of data sizes. Okay. And we can represent this granularity or level of data in, in terms of tree. Okay. So it is represented. So if we want to represent what we have just studied, this structure in form of tree, what we will have? We will have database. Okay. It will have multiple child, which are tables. Okay. So I'll write, let's say A, B, C, these are table names. Then we will have multiple records, let's say R1, R2, R3 and so on. And each record will have again data. Okay, so we can write D1, D2, D3 and so on. Okay, now you can see that in this case also, in case of multiple granularity also, we get a tree. And in previous lecture also, we got a tree which was database graph. Okay. So those, we need not to get confused among these two because these are two different entity. Here you can see that inside this database, all these tables are there. But in case of database graph which we studied in case of tree protocol or graph based protocol each items a b c d etc are mutually exclusive there there was nothing common right but here here inside this database these tables are are there so basically it's a level of data we are talking right and that tree was formed this tree in graph based protocol was formed on the basis of their order of access, right? Now, let's say a transaction locks this table A. Okay. Now, when I'm saying a transaction T1 locks this table A, it simply means that if I lock a table, then the lower levels, that is whatever inside this table, 
the records and the data all are locked right so if i lock this table itself whatever is there inside everything is locked now right so the next thing we have to understand is in this tree when a node is locked all the children are automatically locked okay that is there is a implicit lock on the children now let's understand what are the problems which we will face if we follow these rules now imagine a situation where we have a lock by some transaction on this record r1 okay so let's say transaction ti has already a lock on this r1 right now transaction ti wants to acquire another lock on this database item d2 okay now what will happen as we know that when lock is required on d2 it means that no upper level of this d2 should be locked as we know there is a granularity in data that is this d2 is part of this record this record is part of this table and this table is part of this database okay so if let's say this table itself was locked by some other transaction then of course we cannot acquire lock on this d2 right because if this table is locked no children can be locked okay we we know from this rule that when a node is locked all the children are automatically locked right so if i want to acquire a lock on d2 it means that no parent no ancestor should be locked right it means that in first case what we need to do if i have to lock a node we need to start from root itself from root to that node we have to traverse and that we we have to keep checking that is there any node which is locked by some other transaction in order to lock a lower level element what we need to do is we need to check from root to that level that is there any ancestor node who is locked already fine similarly now imagine a situation which is case 2 here in this case we want to acquire a lock on this database itself okay now if i want to acquire a lock on this database i need to check that any of the descendant should not be locked by any other transaction right what do i mean by saying let's say this r3 is already locked by some transaction tj right so let's draw it here so this is my database this database this is table this is table and this is table c now in this table i have multiple records and here this is r3 for me r1 r2 r3 and this r3 is already locked this r3 is already locked right and now if i want to acquire a lock on this database it is not possible right because if i want to acquire a lock on this database when lock is granted all the children okay all the children will be automatically locked right but if a child is already locked then in that case the parent cannot be locked right okay so in that case what we will have to do if we want to lock a upper level item we need to search the entire tree that is there any other node exist which is locked by some other transaction right so these are the two problems which we need to address and to address these problems we introduce some additional types of locks so till now what we have studied studied is we have shared lock and we have exclusive lock right now we introduce intention lock modes so apart from shared and exclusive lock we in introduce three intention mode locks first one is intention shared it means that 
if there is a intention shared lock on a node it means that at lower level explicit locking is there with shared lock so what i mean by saying is if at a node we get intention shared lock it means that at lower level of this node we have shared locking okay so this node is locked with shared lock this node is locked with shared lock right fine the next intention mode lock is intention exclusive okay so it means that if a node is locked with intention exclusive at lower level the nodes may be locked with i mean explicitly locked with when i'm saying saying explicit lock or implicit locking it simply means that if i apply a lock on this let's say i apply a exclusive lock on this this is explicit lock okay i'm applying lock on this node so this node is explicitly locked now if this has some child let's say this one and this one now as we have studied we have multiple granularity of data so if i lock this parent this node will be automatically locked these two nodes right so this is implicit lock okay okay this is automatically locked we have not applied lock on this this node but it was locked because it is a part of this node right okay the last one is shared and intention exclusive lock it means that if we on a node we have shared intention exclusive lock it means that subtree routed through this node is locked explicitly in shared mode okay so it means that this is let's say i have shared intention exclusive lock here then the subtree let's consider this subtree here we will have this shared mode lock so here it will have shared ex i mean explicitly this node is shared locked and then followed by that at lower level another node is explicitly locked by exclusive mode okay so that's why we have both in this name shared intention exclusive okay and it says subtree routed by that node is locked explicitly in shared mode and explicit locking is done at lower level with exclusive mode okay so here we have shared mode locking and here we have exclusive mode locking fine okay now as now we have five locks total so first one is intention shared intention exclusive then we have shared we have shared intention exclusive okay and we have exclusive right five mode of locks so we need to check the compatibility of each lock with another one so the compatibility matrix will be like this here this intention shared is compatible with all the other all the locks except this exclusive so intention shared is compatible with all four except this exclusive similarly this will also be right this intention shared is compatible with all except this exclusive okay we know that shared is compatible with shared okay and we need to know that this intention exclusive is compatible with intention exclusive okay apart from this all other are not compatible so at all the places we will put this cross sign means not compatible right so easy to remember 